So I'm Kun Jin from the uh, university, uh, university of Michigan. I'm currently a PhD student in the uh, electrical and computer engineering department. Um, this work is a joint work with um, Xue Ru Zhang, uh, Muhammad Mahdi Halili, and uh, Pernas Nagizadeh, and my advisor, Minyan Liu. Um, so let me start with the uh, motivations and uh, some background of this topic. So um, strategic uh, classification or regression problems are normally studied as a Stack Overflow game, where the uh, decision maker moves in the first stage by designing and committing to a decision rule. Um, in classification, it will be a classifier, and in regression, it will be a regression function. And then in the second stage, the agents will simultaneously move to uh, best respond to the uh, decision rule they observe. And they will strategically manipulate their features so that they can get desirable decision outcomes and thus uh, maximize their own utility functions. So in our work, uh, we consider two different types of manipulation actions for the agent. Um, the first one will be improvement actions, where the agent take the action to improve their features as well as their labels. And the other type is the more conventional type called gaming actions. Uh, when an agent takes a gaming action, um, it only changes the agent's observable feature to the decision rule, but there is no change to its label. So a uh, high level takeaway is that when an agent takes gaming actions, uh, it will uh, hurt the performance of the decision rule. But when the agent takes an improvement action, it will preserve the performance of the decision rule. So um, decision makers definitely prefer agents to take improvement actions over gaming actions. But usually the case is that gaming actions are a lot cheaper than the improvement actions. And the agents, then, and the rational agents will choose gaming actions. So um, we're interested in studying subsidies in this type of uh, system setting, uh, where the decision maker will design subsidies on the improvement actions, so that the the cost of improvement actions will decrease for the agents, and thus become more favorable. And in, and in return, when the agents take improvement actions, uh, the, the decision rule performance will also improve, and that will be a benefit to the decision maker. And the subsidy cost will be uh, a cost term to the decision maker, um, and that will be the game, uh, that will be the utility function for the decision maker. Um, so the subsidy is uh, in addition to the decision rule, and also implemented in the first stage of the game. And when a combination of a subsidy mechanism and the decision rule is used, we call the strategic learning problem an augmented strategic learning problem. So one of the popular motivation uh, example for, for this type of system setting is the school admission problem. So in this problem, the school, prin uh, the school principal can be a decision maker designing uh, test score based admission rules, uh, that's the uh, decision rules here. And then when the agents uh, or say the students observe the test score, uh, the test based decision rule, um, they will try to take cheating or hard work type of actions. So cheating will be gaming actions and hard work will be improvement actions to get a desirable test score and thus uh, the desirable admission outcome. And of course, the, the students are different in their endowment, which can be thought of as talents or um, anything that they accumulated throughout the years. Um, so in return, the decision outcome will uh, also determine the school's uh, utility function. Uh, this is because the schools will always want to uh, admit students that meet their requirement and have a good enough understanding of the materials. And here, uh, we consider school to be able to subsidize the hard work by uh, like giving discount to do tuition fees so that uh, in to incentivize agents to take a real effort and work hard to understand the material better. So next, I will uh, elaborate more on the model for augmented strategic learning. Um, where we consider two different types of uh, 
mechanism design cases. In the first type, there are two parties discussed just now. Uh, there's the decision maker that implements the decision rule and the subsidy at the same time. And there are uh, agents. In the second uh, mechanism design case, there, uh, it is a three-party uh, system where a third party will be another first mover um, that designs the subsidy mechanism, um, which, uh, who will charge a price from the decision maker and implement the subsidy mechanism on the agents. Uh, we will focus more on the strate strategic classification problem since our analysis and results are quite similar for the uh, strategic regression case. So um, as discussed just now, uh, an every agent will have a pre-response attribute as their endowment. And in their response phase, in the second stage of the game, they will take an action that has two different components. The first one is the improvement component denoted by A plus, and the uh, second one is the gaming action component denoted by A minus. So the uh, improvement action will improve the agent's post-response attribute as well as its post-response features. Um, on the other hand, the gaming action can only change the post-response features, but not the, the attribute. And the agent's post-response label is determined by a likelihood function L, as well as its post-response post attributes. And the theta vector here uh, is what we call a qualification coefficient. And the decision rule we consider in this setting is a, uh, a, a classifier with a linear decision boundary. Um, it has a classification coefficient w um, and, um, and a threshold tau. So the agent's utility has two components, the benefit component being their post-response uh, decision rule outcome. And, um, and the cost will just be the action cost. Um, in the augmented case, the agent's utility are quite similar to the con conventional case, uh, except that now it, uh, it incurs a augmented cost instead of the uh, conventional cost, which we denote as uh, H subscript A here. Um, the decision maker's utility will, be, uh, the, the, uh, will, will consist of two components, the benefit component being the performance of the algorithm, and the cost component being the uh, subsidy of the uh, uh, the cost uh, the cost of the subsidy uh, algorithm uh, mechanism. Sorry. So here I will elaborate more on the cost and benefit of the subsidy. So the subsidy mechanism consists of two components. The first one is a discount vector uh, delta c, um, and the second component is a discount amount range. So. We consider the conventional action cost to be a L1 action cost, and the augmented action cost uh, will have the following form, which um, the discount will be applied to each one of those action dimensions. And if the discounted amount uh, is within the discount amount range, uh, that agent will, be, uh, will receive this uh, discount as a reimbursement. Um, the subsidy benefit on a single agent is the uh, performance improvement in the augmented case compared to the um, conventional case. And the subsidy cost on an agent will just be the uh, discount amount. So we can define for every individual a subsidy surplus, that is the subsidy benefit on that agent minus the subsidy cost on that agent. And a population-wise subsidy surplus will be an integration on the individual subsidy surplus um, on the agents that uh, activate this discount. So uh, now I'll introduce a, a different mechanism design setting, the three-party uh, system here. Um, the third party is another first mover. And uh, instead of trying to optimize the algorithm performance, uh, it will try to maximize some, uh, optimize some social well-being metrics, for example, fairness or efficiency uh, in the system. And it will charge a price from the decision maker, like a, like a service fee, and then implement the subsidy mechanism to the agents and incentivize them to take improvement actions. 
So here we want uh, three ideal properties of the mechanism. Uh, the, first, the first one being individually rational, when uh, w the definition being the agents are uh, uh, better off within the mechanism than opting out. And the second one is budget balance, uh, being the, the price charged from the decision maker uh, is weekly larger than the subsidy cost. And the third one is uh, incentive compatibility. Uh, here, this mechanism is a little bit different from the conventional mechanisms. So the incentive compatibility, uh, to, to understand that we can think of when agents participate in the mechanism, they will uh, review their private information, their endowment to the decision maker. Um, so next is the uh, optimal subsidy mechanism. Um, we first show that it's never worth subsidizing the gaming actions. Um, this is because uh, it will only increase the, the, the subsidy cost, but not the uh, performance of the algorithm. And next, we, we show that uh, the optimal solution is hard to find. In, uh, the, the optimal subsidy mechanism is hard to find in general, even given a fixed decision rule. Uh, this is because uh, of the high dimensionality in the action space, and, uh, as well as some arbitrary uh, properties of the likelihood function, as well as the distribution of the endowment. Um, especially when the uh, qualification coefficient and uh, classification coefficients, theta and w, are different, um, it, it can turn out that all the uh, parameters in the subsidy mechanism uh, when, the, when trying to optimize over them, we are solving an arbitrarily non-convex problem. Um, in a special case, uh, in a special but realistic case, when uh, theta equals w, uh, we are happy to show that we have closed form representations of the optimal subsidy mechanisms. Um, this is realistic uh, because um, theta equals w is the optimal solution to the um, uh, decision maker when incentivizing improvement action with the decision rule itself is impossible. So this is intuitively this is when improvement actions are much more expensive than the uh, than the gaming actions. And uh, for a more rigorous definition of the impossibility result, one can refer to um, how do classifiers incentivize agents to uh, invest strategically. There we have a. Uh, uh, sub sub substitutability definition on each of the action dimensions. When the substitutability of an action is low, it means that a linear combination of other actions uh, can have a weekly lower cost, but uh, a weekly better uh, feature imp improvement. So the optimal subsidy uh, mechanism will subsidize one of the improvement actions so that it has the tight highest return on investment for the agents. Uh, it also covers some of the agents who need actions to get accepted, and more specifically, it will target agents that have a positive individual subsidy surplus if the decision maker is the mechanism designer. So here we have two figures uh, giving some intuitions of the uh, subsidy mechanism and the optimal one. Uh, on the top right corner, we have the conventional case um, of strategic classification. Uh, where we have A1 as the improvement action and A2 as the uh, gaming action. And the uh, uh, blue solid line is the classification boundary, and the blue dotted line is a uh, equal cost contour. Uh, here we see that the equal cost contour uh, hit the uh, classification boundary as Z. And uh, that means uh, at an action cost of 0.8, the agent with endowment X can take a pure gaming action to reach Z and then get accepted. Um, in the augmented case, which is the uh, uh, lower right bottom, um, where we have the augmented, um, augmented action cost uh, denoted as the, uh, shown as the red dotted line here. So when given the subsidy, the uh, equal cost contour becomes different, and the red dotted line sh shows that um, since every line is, uh, every point on this line segment is also on the decision boundary, uh, the, the agent is indifferent from uh, any point on this segment, and we assume that it will break tie choosing the pure improvement action. Um, and also, in this case, the decision maker will make a correct uh, classification. 
So uh, uh, a, uh, another hot topic in uh, strategic learning is the fairness issues. Um, here we will elaborate more when we have different demographic groups in the game. So we consider the decision rule uh, to be not allowed to use the uh, uh, sensitive attribute for classification, um, but the uh, subsidy mechanism can make use of this uh, sensitive attribute and uh, let the agents uh, re review the sensitive attribute voluntarily to participate in uh, different subgroup subsidy mechanisms. And um, we consider two different types of group disadvantage disadvantages. The first one being disadvantage in feature and the second one being disadvantage in cost. Here we'll elaborate on the latter one because it provides uh, better intuition. So some social well-being metrics uh, to consider for the, uh, for the third party uh, are, are as follows. The efficiency oriented, uh, where it will try to maximize the social qualification status, which is the uh, expected label uh, post response of the entire population. And then some fairness oriented uh, metrics. Uh, the first one being quality gain. The quality gain is the uh, uh, quality uh, Im improvement of a subgroup. Um, and there can be gaps in the quality gain. There can be gaps in the true positive rate. And there can be gaps in the demographic parity. Oh, sorry. OK. Um, so um, the fairness issues exist in conventional case. And we, we show that um, the fairness issues can actually be worsened by uh, the subsidy mechanisms if, the, if it's implemented by the decision maker or an efficiency oriented third party. But a fairness oriented third party can, uh, re can reduce the fairness gaps and even reduce it to zero when, when we know the minority group is disadvantaged. Um, so we also run some numerical results on the FICO data, and we treat the um, credit score as the feature and the uh, repayment rate as the likelihood function. Um, we consider the decision maker and the third party mechanism design cases and uh, run some experiments. Um, and among all the, different, uh, all the different system settings, we find out that an oriented, a fairness oriented third party can achieve the best well-rounded system outcome in terms of fairness, efficiency, um, utilities, and uh, algorithm robustness. Um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, no, they don't. They can't uh, observe the actions of the agents. They can only observe the uh, features of the agents. But once they participate in the subsidy mechanism, uh, they know that uh, they know that they are going to take the action that is uh, having the highest return on investment, which will be one of those improvement actions. And uh, and if not, they can also do the backward induction and know the. Uh, uh, gaming action with the highest return on investment. They can know it by doing some backward induction, but they don't explicitly know it. Um, is there like, do you have a situation in mind where like, such a um, third party like, mechanism might exist um, in this like, strategic classification system? Um, um, sorry, could you please? Uh, like, yeah, so like, you know, like you described the, um, like the, the school and the student um, traditional like, strategic classification like, setting, but in that setting, so I guess what would the situation be in which um, such a third party um, would exist? OK, thank you for the clarification. So uh, a government can be the third party in this case. And the government will be implementing the tuition fee discount to the, to the students and charge a fee from the school. Okay. Yes, please. So Have you considered such a mechanism where also the users have to pay the third 
Uh, I actually considered that one, but um, I think the charging the school for this is much more um, intuitive because the school is the one that directly benefit from the uh, decision rule improvement. For the agents, um, it, they only care about the decision outcome, and they know that in this setting, the school cannot tell whether they uh, cheated or not because the decision rule is already published there, and they only take the uh, post response features as input. Um, so they would rather just game all the way if they are rational. And, uh, they don't have an incentive to, to pay the third party for something. 